This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. Hello, and welcome into this week's edition of Mizzou. That's who here on KC Sports Network. I'm your host Tucker Franklin, joined as always by Gabe Diarman and Maggie Johnson. We're here to talk about everything that's going on in Mizzou athletics. Well, maybe not everything, uh, but we will talk about uh, what's going on with Mizzou. Uh, Gabe, how are you doing today? I'd be doing a lot better if somebody gave me $62 million, I can tell you that. Nobody did. Absolutely. Anonymously, too. I wish someone would anonymously give me $62 million. Uh, Maggie, uh, how have you been? How was your week? Good. Pretty pretty chill weekend here. Didn't have We didn't have any football to watch, really. Um, or I guess, I mean... Yeah, not really. Um, but yeah, it was pretty pretty low key. I did watch basketball, but you know, we'll get to it if we get to it. <laughs> right. That's that's gonna be that's gonna be the premise of every show moving forward. Just so you guys know, tuning into it, we'll get to it if we get to it. When it comes to basketball, if there are more pressing things to talk about, like hey, Mizzou gymnastics went up to number twelve. I'd rather talk yeah. about that than I would rather talk about this basketball team. But we'll start. Uh, with, with what Brett Gabe brought up, uh, an anonymous $62 million donation showed up on the doorstep of the uh, Missouri Tigers uh, facility. I think that's how it works. I think they just drop off a bag of cash right there. I, I think so. Um, and they don't know who dropped it off, but uh, with $50 million of that being donated to uh, Memorial Stadium renovations, $12 million of it going to uh, the NIL, the Tiger Fund that they have set up there. Uh, Gabe, can you give us any more details, anything else you, you know about this? Well, that second part is the most important part, right? It's like, that's fine. $50 million, do the end zone stuff, put up whatever you want to put up. I, it's fine. But $12 million to NIL. And look, I, I'm sure there, I, I don't know if there are designations for, I want to go to football or this much to go to basketball or I, I don't know. Um, you know, that wasn't specified in the release it may just be here's 12 million dollars spend it how you want to spend it get whoever you need to get um that is it is hard to overstate um the importance of that uh and and we've been saying like people have been surprised about missouri's nil efforts right Mm -hmm. and then i tweeted that out and the number of sec and national media who retweeted it, it it was something along the lines of we knew Missouri had stupid money, but we didn't know they had stupid money like this. Um, you know, Pete Nakos from on three said, uh, just for reference sake, most of the top rosters in college football are eight to $12 million a year. Yeah. So theoretically, Mizzou just got funding for a national title contending football team. Um, if, if that's the way you want to look at it, that is, uh, Look, this is the currency. This is how it works right now. And like we've said all along, you can complain about it. You can hate it. You can think it's ridiculous. You can think it's going to change whatever. But for now, if you want to be a part of it, you have to have people doing something like this. And I hope that if Missouri does make the college football playoff next year or the year after that or whatever, the way we find out who gave this donation is that he should be allowed to call the opening coin toss at the playoff game or call the first play or maybe just be the offensive coordinator. Or maybe we're seeing like who's a grand marshal at the homecoming parade or or we're paying attention to things like or, that. But, or who the next university president is. Or, the, the, <laughs> or maybe we're seeing like naming rights of things. I don't know. But we've been saying, you know, on this show for a while, we've been talking about things in you know how important like the markets of kansas city and st louis are and you know people have been always saying oh yeah well if we if there are mega conferences or super conferences like mizzou would get kicked out like we were talking about how can how important kansas city and st louis are and we have so many businesses and that are owned by alum people rich people it's very rich people and whether or not they're mizzou alums they have some ties to the university of missouri and it's showing in the amount of money that is funneling in to the university in the past year or two. And it's Missouri fans have always been under the impression, well, Stan Kroenke and Bill Lorry fund the entire athletic department. They're the only people who have ever given money. Um, I don't know who gave this money. I can confidently tell you it was not Stan Kroenke. Uh, I don't know how much he gives if he gives any. I don't care. It's his business. But like, there are a lot of people that have the money to do this. Not a lot. I mean, there aren't a lot of people in the world who can just say, here's $62 billion, 
right? But there are multiple people who are able to give that amount to Missouri, who if I said their names on this podcast, most of the people listening would say, well, I don't know who that is. And that's the point, guys. It's not the Bill Laurie and Stan Kroenke Missouri Athletic Department. I mean, yes, once upon a time, they both gave plenty of money to it. But there are a lot of other people that give money to it. And in fact, for years now, there have been a lot of people that have given a lot more money to it than those two. Not not saying anything. It's their money. I don't care. They can do what the, with it what they want. I'm just fighting back against every time Missouri announces a donation of more than $15. Somebody thinks it has to be Kroenke or Lori. I give more than fifteen dollars, and I know a lot of okay, people. See, don't. a lot of people, go, uh, and a lot of people don't know my name, so I'm just saying. <laughs> but like, yeah, the owner of I know the owner of Chicken and Pickle, who we did stuff with in Dallas. Like, he gives money. I'm pretty positive. I've seen it all over Twitter today. The owner of Panda Express <laughs> went to Mizzou. That's oh. been the, like a big thing. I, I just was pretty funny on Twitter today. So yeah, there's some big, there's some big names. There's some big money owners that you know are Mizzou alums. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's that's my new life goal. What do you want to do when you grow up? I want to be a big money owner. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> yeah, what I'm yeah, trying to say I want to be. <laughs> I just want to own a lot of money. I want to have a lot of money. Yeah, same here. <laughs> and I just want to get out ahead of it. It was not me. Uh, I know some people on Twitter <laughs> speculated it was me. It was not me. Uh, somebody did revise your tweet, Gabe. I don't know if you saw this one. That tweeted at me and said Tugger Franklin gave uh, $62 to the organization. <laughs> Uh, to the to the, and I said that's more like it. That's a little bit more accurate. Still above you, my price well, range. If you were able to give sixty two million dollars and you were sitting here doing this podcast with us, I would be absolutely furious with you. You'd call me a psycho. Uh, I'd, I'd call you an idiot. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, that's probably more like it. But this this donation, uh, as you said in the release, more than double their prior record gift, which happened in twenty twelve. Uh, look, $62 million, uh, you don't need me to tell you that's a lot of money. Um, and Gabe, you hit on the NIL part. Ryan Day had said he like he believes $13 million. I think this was back in 2022. He said like $13 million is what you're going to need for like a national championship level team. Now, again, we don't know how this is going to be distributed through over the years, through the sports, stuff like that. But uh, I, I think, I don't know if it's it's never really safe to assume, but if you're giving $50 million to renovate the football stadium, you could probably safe to think that a lot of this in my own money is going to go towards the football side of thing. Yeah. I just uh, I just did the math. You know, the, the rumor in 2010, which was obviously shot down by the NCAA in about 24 hours, and then Cameron Newton went on to win a national championship. But the, the rumored number then was about $150,000. You know how much money, tw- how many Cam Newtons you can buy for $12 million? How many? 80. You can have 80 Cam Newtons on your team. I'll take it. I'm sold. 100%. He might have had the best season in the history of college football. Missouri should buy 80 of those. Of course, the problem is those now cost like 10 times as much as they used to. So maybe you can only buy 80. And there's only, and you know, can only get one Heisman a year. So it's a lot of money. That's true. (laughs) Also, I, I do think it's important to point out, though, like the release didn't specify, and I don't think it ever will. We don't like I don't think somebody wrote Missouri a sixty two million dollar check today. Yeah. These often are I'll give you fifty million for the stadium, five million a year for ten years, right? But they never say that because it's way cooler to say we just got sixty two million. And imagine somebody literally like just pulling up with just duffel bags and dumping it on Desiree bag man desk. Yeah. Speak speaking of Desiree though. Or a giant like, check. She you gotta She's got to be the person responsible for pulling that money in, for going to whoever's office this is and being the person that was like, hey, 62 sounds like a solid number. <laughs> we'll, we'll get 50 million to, <laughs> to the stadium. Promise we'll get a new sound system. Sound system has to be in this, right? It has to be sound like. I know it's in the plans. They've it's got it, It's got to be. But I. There's just so, not enough. So, to so say, like how twelve dollars at Radio Shack, they're gonna have a lot left over. <laughs> I don't even know if Radio Tech still exists, actually. That's no, I don't think so. But I do think that that would probably improve it. <laughs> I hope so. I'm curious what they're gonna. I know they announced plans or the Board of Regents approved plans for like the end. So, I, truthfully, I wasn't really inclined to like what the what plans they had until like ground actually starts being broke. I don't know what. 
Uh, if you ha- have any inside game on that, or when they do plan to start breaking ground or renovating or anything like that. No, I know there's another curators meeting. I want to say in April where things might be discussed a little bit. I haven't seen any pictures. I think, I think pictures do exist, and I think approximately five people have seen them. Uh, they're not the ones that were put together on Twitter. Or all yeah. the, they, they were kind of cool, you know, but like I liked, I liked the one that had like a volcano in the North End Zone. That would be really cool. You know, I like it when the hill gets the, bigger. They keep making the, volcano, the hill bigger. The volcano like would erupt at every touchdown. Or something. That would be amazing, right? But you should do it like right by the visitor section or something. But um, no, I... The, the, I would think i mean i'm not a stadium person but i would think 50 million dollars just on the north end zone like i would think that would buy a lot of things i mean there's a lot you can do because it's blank like you have a blank canvas there it's just flat area i mean obviously i think most people will want to kind of keep the hill not i mean you can do that to it they'll keep the the rock and the rock are going nowhere like i yeah That is the one thing Desiree has said over and over and over on the record. As long as I am the AD, that is, those are not changing. Like, I wouldn't even care if they wanted to do some, like a little bit to the hill. Like, even if they wanted to do like a, like a little bit of expansion on there. But if they want to build on top of it, which they should, I mean, I'm fine with that. Like, put a little bit of like of an entertainment kind of thing up there. But you have, there's just so much stuff that you can do up there because there's nothing there. So they have a lot they can work. I think they should put like alpine slides on the hill and that's how the players should enter, you know, just <laughs> like make a little, little sled and you just ride down right into the stadium. You get to see the Eli Drinkwitz running down the hill, right? But like the, the like the Dabo run where he's just like, oh, dude. yeah, but like on an alpine slide, that would be fun. But you worry way less you, about you just give him like a piece of burlap and he just cruises <laughs> down there. Like they do at the, uh, the, the Little League World Series. Yeah. I'm in. Isaiah Stadium. Or what the the brewer um in Milwaukee when he goes down Bernie Brewer. Yeah. yeah, you could do like a slide. Touchdown yeah, slide. Be... Every time there's touchdown, Truman goes so down the slide. Work. So much to work. Or just like just like uh you know that one day they were gonna have uh Truman like skydive into the game, um, but then Dave Matter messed up the weather and they couldn't do it. Um that's an inside joke. Dave Matter had nothing to do with canceling Truman skydive. But, like, maybe the team could do that for one guy. Like, for homecoming, the team just all jumps out of planes. But, so Truman, like but Truman did skydive into the, into the thing. He did, like, the next week, but he did Oh, but they one week. to do it one week, and it didn't happen. Yeah. No, okay. Yeah, I was like, like I definitely have video of it on my phone. I remember looking up and being like, what is Truman doing up there? <laughs> when they were initially going to do it, which I want to say maybe was LSU, but I can't. Maybe South Carolina. I don't remember. Okay, okay. Well, yeah, I think we're going to get LSU, I don't think. It was, it was a little too windy, which apparently is a problem with skydiving. I'm not familiar. It's not a thing I would ever do, but. I'm, I'm a very grounded person. I just want to stay. I don't feel like any of my ideas are going to make it through, by the way. We've had some good ones, though. They should have us at least at the meeting, you know? <laughs> ideas to people. Like, yeah, there are no bad ideas, right? This is a brainstorming session. <laughs> like, I, I'm trying to think of what the biggest check I've ever written in my life is. Oh. is I don't know what it is, but I know there were not six zeros on it. No. So it was less than one sixty second of that by by a lot. <laughs> I don't really write checks. Well, I right. t- I'd be, be using an old person, uh, right. you know. Uh, I don't know. Let's get on here. We do with checks in my business, but mainly I like cash big checks for like my work. Don't really write the big checks. But... It's way more fun to cash them. It, it really is way more. At the good it end of that way deal. More, it is way more fun to cash the big checks. At the good end of that deal. Uh, well, I mean, a very exciting time, obviously, is the, uh, the NIL game getting stepped up and everything. Uh, love, love to see it uh, as... Missouri is going to be primed for a uh, a very good football season. Obviously, they got a good class coming in. I think there's some buzz around the 2025 class as well. Always with recruiting, you always have buzz about the next class. But uh, we're going to take a break here. There's some news on the football front in terms of just the conferences that are kind of on the national landscape between the SEC and the Big Ten. We'll talk about that a little bit. But first, got to tell you about our friends at Homefield Apparel. I'm rocking the uh, gold Mizzou roster. I don't know how well you can see that on the uh, – 
screen, the fight for the Tigers. So if I, uh, that's a good one that Maggie's wearing down there, fight for Mizzou. Um, great logo, the Leaping Tiger football. Tiger is always a, is a good one, but you can go check out our friends there. Homefieldpearl.com, they got everything you need for a Missouri Tigers fan, but if you got friends who are all across the country who like other schools, they get you covered there too. 150-plus designs that they got going on there at Homefieldapparel.com. Always dropping new stuff too. They do not take a break. They are always dropping new stuff. You can go check them out for uh, 15% off your first order. Use that code KCSN23. That'll get you 15% off if you haven't ordered there before. So make sure you go take advantage of that We'll be back on the other side of the break to talk a little bit more Mizzou football, so stay tuned. We appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest-ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. kcsn.substack.com Looking for a super offer? For this Super Bowl 58, DraftKings Sportsbook has you covered. New customers can bet on the big game and turn five bucks into 200 instantly in bonus bets. Looking at the Super Bowl, somehow the Chiefs are still dogs. Plus two for the Kansas City Chiefs, plus 105 on that money line. Go take advantage of that by downloading the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and using code KCSN. New customers can bet five bucks to get 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of Super Bowl 58. With code KCSN, the crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Uh, Gabe, I don't know how the Chiefs are still dogs in this game. I don't get it. Yeah, I was surprised by that. Um, I don't know, but, you know. Uh, I put the whole DraftKings account on. I, I like it. I like it. Yeah, I mean, look, if they're going to, if, if DraftKings is just going to give away free money, I'm going to take it. Um... I I found I don't know if you know this, but that's actually how they build all the build, big buildings in Vegas. They're just like let's we've got too much money. Let's give some of it away. Yeah, let's the Super Bowl be in Vegas. Uh, I, I I like the I like the term lock and sure things in gambling. It, it's always true. I'm actually that. excited about it because I think it's the best matchup like position player for position player that we've seen in a while. Because I mean, obviously they've they've played each other before, but like I'm excited to see Kelsey versus Kittle again, and oh, yeah. and like I'm I mean obviously, you know what I mean. But like I'm excited to see Mahomes versus Brock Purdy. That yeah. excites me. I can't wait to what? see what Steve Spagnuolo just puts his brain in a blender. My goodness, I, like that's when I was watching the NFC Championship game, I was like, Steve Spagnuolo is going to have to go up against a Jared Goff or Brock Purdy. Like, at least give him a tougher challenge than that. Didn't. Ups- Fortunately, upsets never happen. So. We'll see. It's true. This test was very bad. Anyway, <laughs> let's get into... Uh, well, Gabe, I thought this was really interesting. We we saw this, I think it was Friday or maybe early Saturday. I can't remember the timeline exactly of when the this alliance was formed between... Friday after. The, what's the word for it? It's not... An, it's like a... It's I basically I, a joint task. It's basically a joint task force. Yes, advisory committee. Advisory, yes. I had to look what I wrote down, and I couldn't really read my handwriting all that well. Um, an advisory committee. Uh, uh, basically, just explain this. Like, what, what's going on? Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I, I have not read a ton of it. I was uh, it's out of town. It's, it's been a busy week. I saw the tweet from the SEC on uh, is Friday midday about lunchtime and um i haven't read a ton on it but basically it is going to be a group of people from sec and big 10 universities athletic directors presidents whoever they haven't announced who yet that are going to get together to discuss the many challenges within college athletics um what i think it is is the big 10 and the sec getting together saying all animals are created equal, but we are created more equal than you. And here is what we are going to want if you want us to continue to play with you on the farm. 
Otherwise, we will go off and form our own farm and it will print money and none of you guys will get any of that. Yeah, the quote unquote was take a leadership role in developing solutions for a sustainable future of college sports. So exactly what Gabe just said. When they use a word salad. <laughs> but when they use the word sustainable, for me, like what you said, Gabe, was they want to figure out what they want to do, the Big Ten and the SEC, to make sure they are in the best position for themselves for the long term. What Whether and- that means screw your auto bids to the playoff big 12 and ACC we just take the top 12 teams and if you say no we'll just go have our own playoff uh whether it means here's how Nil is going to work I I don't know but it basically means to me we're going to propose the rules and you're going to agree to them or we're going to leave because we have all the good teams and we have the most money and the rest of you don't matter this is why moving to the SEC matters back when Missouri did. Now, I'm I'm not going to pretend that anybody knew all of this was coming in 2012, but this is why all of the people, including me, who at times have, you know, man, there were a lot of cool things about the Big 12 and college sports in a lot of ways seems worse, but this is why Missouri had to do what it did at the time. And it, the Big 10 would have obviously been fine too, but everybody knew everyone wasn't surviving. The Pac-12 is dead the Big 12 and ACC have survived in a neutered state. And it's why when you look back even a year ago and everybody's like, when, when they were upset that we're lo- like, we've lost some football games or, you know, we, we've been 500 and they're like, well, wouldn't you rather just go back to when it's easier? Well, would you rather be on the outside or would you rather be on the inside? Because... <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be where we are in basketball. Nobody wants to be where we are in basketball. It sucks. It it sucks. But I don't want to be where K-State is right now. I don't want to be where Iowa State is right now because they're not sitting very pretty. Like, they're not in a position where they're very attractive to any conferences. So, I mean, we're we're in a better position whether we like where we are athletically or in some sport. what this what this basically is what the SEC or Big Ten membership at this point basically is is a guaranteed seat at the table wherever the table is located and however many chairs are there. You know, um, we know that there will be at least thirty six chairs at the the big table uh, at the adult table eventually. Um, maybe they voluntarily remove themselves from the table. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't seem likely. It doesn't seem like a smart move, but. Uh, other than that, I, I don't see the SEC or the Big Ten saying to anyone, "Hey, we're going to go do this thing, but we're kicking you out of the club." I, I don't, yeah. I don't think that's a thing that would happen. Well, especially you look at schools like the Andy, and you look at schools like Purdue. Like Purdue's been in the the Big Ten since 1896. Like the right. founder. I mean, Purdue's good at things and they care about sports, right? Yeah, and- Vandy, Vandy is really the only school in these two. Look, guys, I, and I don't mean to make too much of this, but like. I went to their basketball game and like that place is dumb. Yeah. It, it's awful. I mean, I was, I was literally looking at the championship banners from the media seating, the old media seating, they sold to donors, but nobody was sitting in it. You know, um, it, it's like, they don't have the same commitment to athletics that everybody else in these two major conferences does. Like you can say, look, Maryland sucks at things or Rutgers sucks or, you know, Arkansas hasn't been good, but it's not because they don't care about being good. Yeah. And I've seen no indication at any point in time, really, that Vanderbilt particularly cares about being good. And that's what it takes to be in these leagues. And so that that's why I kind of almost separate them from, like, if it went this way, I'm not 100% sure Vandy wants to be a part of it. Everybody else, I think, wants to be a part of it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's when it's 60 and, 60 and sunny in Nashville, like... Are you gonna on a Saturday? Are you gonna sit? Are you gonna sit in uh whatever their arena is called? Or are you gonna go out and do stuff? Because I, as a student, if I was a student in Nashville, I'm not gonna probably be at that basketball game. So yeah, but like it's it's nice in Chapel Hill, but they try. You yeah, know, well, I mean, yeah, no, it's totally different. Yeah, good. yeah, mm-hmm. it's totally different. Students go there for basketball. You know, students go to Duke for basketball. 
for for that environment. So it's totally different. And that was that was. I'm, I'm old enough to remember when I went to Missouri partly because of basketball. Fair. Uh, imagine somebody saying that now. Uh, and that was another thing. Two months ago. Right. Uh, that I thought of when I saw this is like the Indiana specific. Indiana is one of them that that I think of like as a kind of a punchy. Ever since I've been alive and been paying attention, Indiana hasn't really been good at much. Like uh, basketball, they've got the history with basketball and everything like that. Um, I, I think they're showing signs of caring about football. But I think Indiana was the one that was like, oh, I don't, don't know about them. That They're like the Vandy of the SEC maybe um, is, is where you can put that, it in the same conversation. Like th- that's an age gap thing. That sure. would be wild to sure. say to anyone my age. I mean, it, like it was, it was a top five basketball program for the first two thirds of my life, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is a wild thing, but like ever since that I can really remember. Right. Like they've never been good at football. They've had a bad run in basketball, but like there's no reason to think Indiana can't have the resources to oh, for sure. Right. And and that's the, and really I wouldn't think there's no reason Vandy can't have those. Re- I would imagine Vandy has rich people that have graduated from there because if they don't, then you should not have spent that much money on your education. <laughs> um, but, you know, but, but it has to be an administrative, like Maggie was talking about Desiree, you know, and, and, what she has done here, there has to be a commitment to it from the administration. And that that's what this really is about. This big 10 sec thing. These are the like-minded schools, right? Um, they, they've all decided like when Missouri decided we want to be in the sec, then you made consciously or unconsciously a decision. We want to play this game. Yeah. We want to pour this money into it. We want to create this wild law that nobody's going to understand how it's legal but it's going to help us at football. So we're going to do that. I mean, that's, and I understand anybody who is not a diehard sports fan looking at this and saying, this is gross. I really do understand it, but it's what it is. It is what it is. And uh, I quote that I saw from uh, big team commissioner, Tony Patetti. He, this was in the release. We recognize the similarity in our circumstances, as well as the urgency to address the common challenges we face. Now, Greg Sakey said something pretty. They must have their PR staffs must have cross referenced their their uh, their, uh, their statements because they are almost identical, just with different words. Uh, but the advisory group will have no authority to act independently and will only serve as a consulting body. Its composition, charter, and timetable, as well as the specific questions it might examine, have yet to be determined. Uh, but Gabe, one of the questions that I kind of thought of when I saw this was like, okay. Literally like a year ago, the Big Ten entered a, a partnership type deal. I, I do think this is a bit different. Uh, this That was an, that an alliance that they uh, formed with the ACC. Was it the Pac-12 as well was the other, other that, one? That that had to do with football scheduling, yes. Gotcha. Um, so I just don't know how much you can really trust the Big Ten. The Big Ten, they're going to put a knife in your back the first movie you make. Yeah, but but this, I mean, the alliance that was dumb to begin with. And I think a lot of people knew how dumb it was, you know. And then, like twelve months later, the Big Ten killed the Pac-12, you know, yeah. like literally. So no, this is a different. This is really a. This is it's a committee, right? It's a hey, let's we're gonna get some people together to meet to talk about studying the things. I, I mean, they're not making any decisions. Greg Sankey and Tony Petiti and university presidents and whatever are making these decisions and oh by the way tv networks um are making these decisions that's who's in charge doesn't espn want like a private stake in college football now from the ncaa it like already does but like officially right all we know is college sports are not ever going to be the same as they've been uh, I don't know how they're going to look different, but they're going to look different. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, oh, by the way, Missouri basketball lost two games the last time we recorded. Um, Good. Any, any, uh, any final thoughts before we uh, we move on on this podcast? Oh, hey, we said last week if they lost these two, zero and eighteen was in play. It's in. I still don't think it'll happen, but it's in play. It's definitely in play. And the thing is, is Vandy didn't even play very good. I mean, 
they had one player make four threes who, by the way, had only made four threes all season. And he made four. Now he's made eight. Good for him. Now, now he's made Shout eight. Shout out. <laughs> Big day. Big day. <laughs> I don't have anything to add on this program. Yeah, no, that's it. That's it. All right, we're good. All right, that's going to do it for this week's edition of uh, Mizzou That Too. Uh, make sure to check us out wherever you get your podcast. Appreciate you listening to us, by the way. Uh, make sure to drop a like, hit the subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. We'll be back next week with another episode. Uh, hopefully, we got something other than basketball to talk about, but we'll figure it out. Uh, so until then, uh, for Gabe Gabbard and Maggie Johnson, I'm Tucker Franklin. We will talk to you guys next week. We'll see you.